All right, so this is Geometry Chapter 2, Section 1, Patterns and Inductive Reasoning. Now, I hate to tell you this, there is no equation manipulation, there's no adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. This is just informative, kind of like vocabulary, operation kind of thing. So if you're looking to solve equations or to use a calculator, you're going to be very dis disappointed. This is just, it's, it's more along the lines of learning about a period in history um, where you have the dates and the, the important figures, political figures, that kind of stuff. That's how we should approach this, sec this especially this entire chapter um, of our geometry class. So our learning objective today, and I would encourage everybody to write this right underneath the section title on their notes, is to use inductive reasoning to make conjectures. All right, so inductive reasoning is reasoning based on patterns you observe. So, if we look at problem number one, if we look at problem number one, we're going to use inductive reasoning. Um, what I want you to do right now, on um, right underneath your page, is let's write inductive. equals pattern slash observation or observe since I don't have enough room because these two keywords pattern or observation or observe are should clue you into inductive so we're going to use inductive reasoning to find the pattern and predict the next two terms in the sequence so in problem number one Three, nine, twenty-seven, eighty-one. Each term is three times the previous term, so that would make the next two terms two hundred and forty-three and seven hundred and twenty-nine. All right, so let's look at example B here. Uh, each circle, so we got circle with a triangle, circle with a square, circle with a pentagon. The pattern is each circle contains a polygon that has one more side than the preceding polygon. The next two circles contain a six-sided figure and a seven-sided figure. All right, so now it's your guys' turn to write this in your notes. What are the next two terms of each sequence? So we have 45, 40, 35, 30. The pattern is 25, 20. What's our pattern? We are subtracting 5 each time. All right, so let's look at our, let's look at sequence B here. We have a square. We have a square with a square. We have a square with a square with a square. What's our next one going to be? Square, square, square. Okay, I'm going to need a thinner line for this guy. So let me get my pan. So we're going to go square with a square with a square with a square. Boom. And then the next one, I'm going to have to get a little bit bigger on this. The next one is going to be square, 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 and one more square. Boom. Damn. 
All right, so a conjecture is a conclusion you reach using inductive reasoning. Go ahead and write this definition on your paper because if you notice, it's going to ask what conjecture can you make about the 21st term. So if we don't know what a conjecture is, it's going to be really hard to answer that question. So let's write that down. A conjecture is a conclusion you reach using inductive reasoning. So like those pattern problems, we found that the pattern was minus 5. So we made a conjecture that the next two terms were going to be 25 and 20. So let's use this. Look at the circles. What conjecture can you make from the, um, uh, can you make about the number of region 20 diameters form? So one diameter forms two regions, two diameters form four regions, three diameters form six regions. We look and we try to find the pattern. Each circle has twice as many regions as diameters. 20 diameters form 2 times 20, or 40 regions. So we find the pattern and use that pattern to make a conjecture. Use inductive reasoning. Remember we said inductive reasoning is the pattern or the observation. And then the conjecture is what you do with it. So I'm gonna, we're going to make conjectures. I'm going to make a conjecture that you guys are going to graduate high school. Um, so <laughs> that's my, based on my observation, that is my conjecture. Now the, the, the downside of inductive reasoning is it is not a postulate or a theorem or an axiom. It's not true 100%. But that is based on observation and pattern. It could, it could be proven true or it could be proven false. All right, so let's look at the pattern here. R, W. B, R, W, B, what do you, what conjecture can we make about the next term? You think it's going to be W? So R, W, B, R, W, B, R, W, B. <laughs> okay, so... What we want to look at is we want to kind of find a pattern. So how we group these in nice little groups of three. So after every third one, it repeats. So if I go this group of three, it's going to repeat. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, <laughs> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21. What conjecture can I make about the 21st term? It'll be B. There are six letters before it starts, uh, it starts repeating again. Three. Um, I have questions. Um, Talk through that real quick. So on your paper, it says, there are three letters in the pattern before it starts repeating. R is the first term, the fourth term, the seventh term, the tenth term, the thirteenth term, the eleventh term, and the nineteenth term. I do have calculated it. W is the second term, the fifth term, the eighth term, etc. B is the third term, the sixth term and the ninth term. And then if we look at the next item, the 21st term, so 21, is a multiple of 3. 21 is a multiple of 3. 
the, so our conjecture is going to be the 21st term of the sequence is B. So we conjecture that the 21st term in the sequence is going to be B. All right. Okay, problem number four, making a prediction. Sales of backpacks at a nationwide company decreased over a period of six consecutive months upstairs. What conjecture can you make about the number of backpacks the company will sell in May? The points seem to fall on a line. The graph shows number of sales decreasing by five, about 500 backpacks each month. So here we were. It's not exact, but it's about, because especially when we're graphing. So we're losing about 500 backpacks each month. Um, by inductive reasoning, you can estimate that the company will sell approximately 8,000 backpacks in May. All right, so let's finish out number four and then we'll go back and do three. Making a prediction. The graph shows a pattern of points. Is that true or false? Does the graph show a pattern with the points? True. True. Each month, the number of backpacks sold increases. False. It decreases. The change in sales varies from month to month, so you need to estimate the change. True. We want to use that same, we want to estimate a pattern so we can make a conjecture. If sales change by about $500 each month, or 500 backpacks each month, you can subtract 500 from April sales to estimate May sales. True. If sales change by about 500 each month, you can add 500 to May sales to estimate June sales. False. We are subtracting each month. Now, make a conjecture about backpack sales in June. About, so June is going to be about 7,500, yeah. All right, so as promised, I backed it up to problem three, collecting information to make a conjecture. What conjecture can you make about the sum of the first 30 even terms? Find the first few sums and look for a pattern. So if you are at all confused in finding the pattern, just try to project them out. All right, so for this table, I have one term. The first even term is two. 2 is equal to 2. 1 times 2 is 2. The second one um, is 2 plus the second even number, which is 4, and that's 6. The th three even numbers is 2 plus 4 plus 6. That's 12. And then the first four even numbers is 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. That is 20. So each sum is the product of the number of terms, so like the first term, and the number of terms plus 1 times 1 plus 1, which is 2. This is the second term times 2 plus 1. Third term times 3 plus 1. So we can conclude that the sum of the first even 30 terms, first 30 even terms, thank you dyslexia, is 30 times 31, or 930. All right, now we're going to do the same thing, but with the first 30 odd. Okay, so we're going to use the same process that we did above, except that we're not going to use evens, we are going to use odds. So hopefully we only need five terms to find the pattern. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And the first 
odd term is 1. That is equal to 1, which is equal to 1 times 1. The next, the two, first two odd terms is 1 plus 3, which is equal to 4, which is equal to right. 2 times 2. Then you get 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is equal to 9, which is equal to 3 times 3. Then the, this one is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, which is equal to 16, which is equal to 4 times 4. 5 is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, which is 25, which is 5 times 5. All right, so now we're going to make a conjecture about the sum of the first 30 odd terms. So I'm going to take 30, I'm going to times it by 30, and it should be 900. So five? Yep. Alright, so let's go to example 5. Um, I want you to write the definition of counterexample. A counterexample is, is an example that shows a conjecture is incorrect. So it's like opposite example. So if you can find, all you have to do to just prove a conjecture is to find one counterexample. All you need is one way to prove it wrong, and it is wrong. So problem number five, and if you're taking Cornell notes on this, um, here's how I would take Cornell notes. I would write down the got it. I would read through the example problem and write in my notes the got it, and the got it is your example. I think that's the most effective use of, of the way the book is structured. Okay, what is a counterexample for each conjecture? If the name of a month starts with the letter J, it is a summer month. Counterexample is January. Starts with a J and it's a winter month. Unless you're in Australia and then it's the opposite. So it's winter. But then June would be the winter month. Okay. You can connect any three points to form a triangle. Counterexample is if three points lie on a line, you cannot form a triangle. Look at these guys. Three points on a line. Crazy. When you multiply by a nu multiply a number by two, the product is greater than the original number. That's true for all positive numbers, but false for negative numbers. Negative four times two is negative eight, and negative eight is smaller than negative four. All right. Now, number five. Uh, we need to find a counterexample. If a flower is red, it is a rose. So let's find a counterexample for a red flower. What other flowers can be red? I can tell you that I have seen red carnations. I've seen red tulips. And I've seen red geraniums for sure. I have those in my front yard. Geraniums. They don't like the frost. All right. B. Uh, so circle the flowers below that are red or can be red. That would be carnation, tulip, geranium. Is every flower you named a rose? That would be no. Because there are three others that are not. Um, write a word to complete the counterexample. Blank is a red flower, but it is not a rose. A tulip is a red flower, but is not a rose.
So a tulip is a red flower, but is not a rose. All right, so let's look at these other conjectures. One and only one plane exists through any three points. One and only one plane exists through any three points. Or four planes. So if I had three points that were like these guys, all in one line, then I would have a plane that comes out towards us. I can have a plane that is vertical. So that's a counterexample. Um, and then C, when you multiply a number by 3, the product is divisible by 6. Three times three is nine. Nine is not divisible by six.